Welcome back folks. This is going to be video number 10 in our Mark 262 cloning series. The basic premise is that we are trying to duplicate this stuff. This is the Black Hills 77 grain OTM. This stuff used by the military designated as Mark 262 Mod 1. So video number 10, right? And the first nine videos have been absurdly successful. We've found some great powders that match the velocity of the Black Hills factory ammo, which was about 2750 to 2760 feet per second. We've been regularly duplicating its accuracy at about a half inch, six tenths of an inch out of my white oak armament barrel. So it's just all around seemed too easy. Today is the day all of that changed. Video number 10 is a dumpster fire. The two powders I wanted to look at today are Hodgstoon H4895. We tested IMR 4895 a couple videos ago. It wasn't bad. Standard deviations were a little bit gross. It didn't quite get us where we needed to be on velocity, but figured this would be a good time to go ahead and test H4895 just to get a good direct comparison with IMR 4895. I have much more experience with IMR 4895. So I was looking to learn about H4895. The second powder for today is the Legend Reloader 15. It's an outstanding 223 powder. Go to any match where people are shooting heavy bullets in 223 and you're gonna smell some burning Reloader 15. Very good accuracy. But it was, you know, kind of doubtful that we can get the velocity that we need out of this powder. Or at least I have my doubts. So those, those were the two powders today, a couple of extruded options, and I expected that we would get some outstanding accuracy at the least, even if we maybe didn't quite reach the velocities we were looking for. Well, what happened is that I went out, I shot two shots of my starting charge, or my first charge of H4895 and saw major pressure signs, had to stop. I'll go ahead and show you now. Here's a look at the brass. Big old gnarly burr where the extractor is on one of them. And the other had a really deep swipe, you know, smear there where the extractor is. I did not expect this. Now, luckily, after I fired the first shot, I looked over at my chronograph. I'm in that habit, right? I want to know about where we're starting out for velocity. And I try to keep tabs on velocity as I go. The first shot was 2,758 feet per second. Faster than I even thought we would be able to get to with this powder. But the first one was the piece of brass that, you know, clearly had pressure, wasn't quite awful. So I went ahead and shot one more shot. It was 2,798 feet per second. And it was the one that raised up the big gnarly burr. So at that point, stopped. Now I moved on to Reloader 15 and I ended up shooting two rows of it. I was getting a couple of ejector smears, but it wasn't like catastrophic or anything. It wasn't terrible, but I was spooked at that point. And you know what, with the other powders we've been testing in this series, that's where we've been stopping. So I decided to call it quits on Reloader 15 as well. So 12 shots is all we got on the range. So what I wanna do, what I wanna turn this video into here is I wanna try to justify my choices for loads. I wanna talk about other things that possibly I could have screwed up that I verified that I don't think I did. I just kinda wanna talk this through. Just like all the other you know, videos in the series, the, the other components were the same. We're shooting uh, Lake City Brass. We're shooting the 77 grain Sierra with the can lure. We're shooting CCI number 41 primers this time. We have been shooting Remington seven and a half sometimes, but you know, kind of been sw uh, switching back and forth a little bit. Today was a CCI 41 day. And let's start, like, let's, let's talk through the load data and let's start with H4895. The first place I looked, was the Hodgton website. They have load data for the 77 grain Sierra hollow point boat tail. We shoot an overall length of 2.246 in this series, just because that's what was in the, you know, that's what we found in the Black Hills. Their data is for 2.260, so it's a little bit longer. So with our shorter overall length, we'd have to expect that that might cause a little bit of extra pressure. But with, uh, with H4895, they show a max charge of 22.6. So that was, that was the first place I looked. That was the first data input I took. Max 22.6, according to Hodgton. The second place was in the Sierra manual, the Sierra load data. They were a good bit higher. They actually show 23.6 grains. 
So that's a full grain hotter than the Hodgson data. And as far as I know, both of these places are talking about, you know, these were tested to 223 pressure. So in this series, we're willing to go into 556 pressures. And for the first nine videos, we've been exceeding all of the published load data out there on pretty much every powder. So here's what I ended up choosing as my five charge weights with H4895. Started at 22.8, that's hot. Now I'm not saying 22.8 was a smart choice, starting above the powder manufacturer's max, certainly not smart, but I guess I got falsely confident with that 23.6 number from Sierra. So I decided to go all the way up to 24. So 22.8 to 24.0 was the range and I did uh, three tenths increments. As you can, as you saw, the first two shots of that 22.8 grain load were over 2,750 feet per second with the worst pressure signs we've seen throughout this whole series. My head is still kind of spinning from this one. I did not expect this. I really didn't. So moving on to Reloader 15, the same load data sheet from Sierra here shows a max charge with Reloader 15 of 24.1. If we go to the Alliant website, they also show a max charge of 24.1. So I felt pretty good about 24.1. And just reading around the forums and stuff, what people shot, like I said, this is an incredibly popular powder. 24.0 grains is given out as a pet load all over the place. Load them to mag length on top of 24 grains and you're good to go. So since I had a pretty good idea of where the sweet spot was on Reloader 15, I um, ended up doing two tenths of a grain increments, starting at 23.7 and loading all the way up to 24.5. So 23.9, these certainly weren't bad pressure signs. I, I could have gone, I could have shot another row or two. I doubt we would have made it to 24.5, but still two tenths of a grain under the maximum from two different published data sources and we're seeing pressure. So this was just very surprising. Let me show you the accuracy really quick. Of course, with two, two shots of H4895, we can't really uh, learn a whole lot there. But our two groups that we shot with Reloader 15, first one was a 716 that kind of had one that got snuck up a little bit high and run the group. And then the second was a 504. So, no, and you know, no surprise. I expected outstanding accuracy from Reloader 15, and that's what we got. Oh, and the, the velocities there, 2624 and 2651. So we were still 100 feet per second below our target. So I don't think we were going to get there. So ignoring Reloader 15. Reloader 15 wasn't that far out of what we expected, but H4895 was the big shock. First, you know, the first thing I was thinking was, first of all, did I read my notes wrong? Did I weigh the wrong charge? Or with my scale, was it out of calibration? Or did I not have it zeroed properly? Or something like that. So I actually already tore one apart and measured it a little bit ago. So here's a 20, 20 grain check weight, just to verify the scale, it reads 20.0. So scale looks good. I've got my Hornady Camlock bullet puller here in the press out of view, but That reads 22.7. I don't know if I missed a granule or two in there, but close enough. 22.8 is what it was supposed to be, and I'm reading 22.7, and it actually just switched to 22.8. So the charge weight was correct. I didn't screw that up. So the second thing I thought of was, okay, maybe whenever I resized this brass, I screwed up my seating die I don't know, I had the wrong shell holder in there and didn't realize it or something, and I screwed up the headspace really bad. So I've got my Hornady comparator here. If we take a loaded round, uh, this the one I grabbed here has got a bit of a shoulder dent. Yeah, can you see that? That's kind of uh, jacking up the reading just a touch, so I'm gonna grab a different one here. So like 1.460 is the number I'm getting. And actually that that last piece with the uh, with the shoulder dent was reading the same thing. 1.460. Now fired piece of brass. 
1.462, so that's two thousandths longer. I thought I had set them back three thousandths, but looks like uh, two or three, perhaps. 1.4625. So I didn't screw that up. Two or three thousandths of headspace after sizing. Now I had moved the scope off of the gun and then put it back on today. So before I started shooting these, I had fired a couple rounds of some ciders that I had laying around. They were loaded with the uh, 65 grain Game King. And this brass looks perfectly fine. No problems at all. So I don't think there was anything going on with the gun. I just started too hot. Eight tenths of a grain below Sierra's max with H4895 and two tenths below with Reloader 15 and I'm in trouble. So this crazy series notwithstanding, and to, to, to be honest, we've started reasonably low with most powders. We've gotten a little hotter than I anticipated to start with a couple, but most of them we've been down 2550, 2600 feet per second, wondering whether we were gonna get, you know, hot enough to get to where we needed to be for velocity, which is just about perfect, right? We want our highest charge to be barely showing us some pressure signs. So we get, you know, so we get an idea of just how far that powder can be pushed. And, I th you know, I think we've just been lucky here through the first nine videos and chosen more or more or less correct. The other thing on the H4895, the reason I chose the loads that I did also was because those were the exact five loads that we shot with IMR4895. And I thought that would make for, you know, an interesting one-to-one -one comparison, plus it fell under Sierra's max load, so I thought we could get away with it, but I certainly didn't. So I think I will return to H4895, mainly because, you know, now that it's kind of defeated me, I want to see, like, what's the practical max load for my gun, and what sort of velocity do I get. We know it's not going to get us there, because what we saw was about the velocity we were looking for, and it had major pressure signs, so... I don't, you know, I, I want to know how far do we need to back off from that to still be good. So 2700 might be a more realistic, practical target for H4895, but it'll be fun to test anyway. So I think that's pretty much it. I might, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you guys like seeing the shooting or not. It's not that useful here, but I'll go ahead and put it together and uh, add it to the end of this video. But I think I've run out of stuff to talk about, and I've got a whole bunch of bullets I need to pull. So I think that's where we'll wrap it up. The next video in this series, I don't know if we'll go back to H4895 and pick another powder to play around with it, or I want to test uh, H414 or Winchester 760. As far as I know, those are the same powders. So H414 and maybe H380, getting back to the extremely slow side of things with H380 there. So that might be the next video in this series. I'm not sure. I'll think it over. I'll see what you guys have to say about this situation because it really caught me off guard. So if you'd like to help support the channel, come to patreon.com slash reloading. You can also check out my affiliate links down in the description. If you're shopping at Brownells, Natchez, Amazon, places like that, today is Thanksgiving. So, you know, a lot of deals going on. So as you do your shopping, consider coming, clicking on one of my affiliate links to get you there. This is going up on Thanksgiving. So if you're watching it, I hope your turkey wasn't dry and I'll see you guys next time. All right, folks, we've got a target at 91.4 meters or 100 yards. Our weapon system for today consists of an 18 inch white oak armament barrel with a one in eight twist in a Palmetto State Armory upper. We're using an Odinworks bull carrier group and a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor with a Magneto Speed chronograph. Additional details will be down in the description if you care about such things. We're gonna start with H4895, 22.8 grains is next. I've got five rounds in a 10 shot magazine. At the conclusion of my introduction, I will make ready and fire at will upon my target until the weapon system is clear. I will then put the weapon on safe, unload, show clear to the camera before moving on to our next exercise, load. Let's get started. Holy crap. The chronograph says 2758. Let me double check that piece of brass. We might be in trouble before we even get started here.
Yeah, sure enough, that piece of brass has got an ejector swipe. It's not too bad though. So I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and shoot one more. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of do this one shot at a time and look at the brass. Yeah, we're done here. That piece, uh, yeah, we're done here. Holy crap, I sure misjudged this. So that one cooked in the chamber and had plenty of time to warm up. Its velocity was 27.98 and the ejector mark on it is even worse. It actually raised up a nice little burr. Wow, I sure did screw this one up. What a bonehead move. All right, moving on to reloader 15. Our first three loads are inside of Alliance load data, so hopefully we'll be a little bit less stupid here. So, all right, starting out, 23.7 grains. Okay, velocity on that guy was 26.34, and I checked the piece of brass just to be sure, and it looks just fine. So, moving right along. All right, great looking group. 26, 24 feet per second, 7.8 feet per second standard deviation. I like those numbers. However, there are two pieces of the brass that seem to have got a little bit of a swipe. I wasn't expecting that until we got up to around 24. It's not so bad, I wanna continue. So next up, 23.9 grains. Yeah, I'm straight up getting ejector swipes here. So we're just gonna call it done. Wow, load 50 rounds and only get to shoot 12 of them. I am an idiot. Let's pack up, get back to the bench.